I'd like to call the regular city commission meeting to order on today, May 17, 2022. And I ask all of you to join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We'll do roll call. Commissioner Jules Olsman. Present. Commissioner Joe Rosell. Present. And Mayor Bob Paul is excused <coughs> for the, uh, this evening due to a family matter. And we have uh, Commissioner Jeff Jenks. Present. Okay. Next, I need a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. Any comments or questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Next, I need a motion to approve the consent agenda. So move. Second. Any questions or comments? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, so we have um, a number of communications items. I'll turn the first three over to our city manager, Chris. Uh, thank you, Mayor Pro Tem Elder. I just included these in the, in the packet for, for your information. Uh, the first is a, uh, a memo and information from the uh, Office of the Water Resource Commissioner on the uh, GWK uh, drainage charges for 2022-2023. I was not certain that the commission normally sees these, uh, but I thought it was good information to let you know how the uh, how the county puts together the charges that they charge back to us for uh, for water and for sewer treatment, which ultimately make their way onto the residents' water bill. So I just included that for your review. Uh, an update from the uh, county equalization department about their work they're doing on our uh, assessing contracts and what they're looking to do to renew those contracts. And then lastly was just the quarterly report uh, from SACRA, which handles our trash and recycling. Don't need a motion on any of those. They were just included in your packet for your information review and be happy to answer any questions relative to those. Thank you. Any questions for Chris? Okay, thank you, Chris. Um, on the fourth item under communications, we have a resignation from Julie Petrick from the Environmental Sustainability Advisory Committee. Um, I'd like to thank her for her service on this committee, but I um, would like to get a motion to support her resignation. So moved. Second. Any questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, um, next we have uh, remarks from our elected officials and I think Representative Weiss is here. Good evening, everyone. Good to see you. Um, I am Representative Regina Weiss, representing the 27th House District, which includes the communities, of course, of Huntington Woods, Berkeley, Oak Park, Pleasant Ridge, Royal Oak Township, Ferndale, and Hazel Park. Um, I just wanted to come and give some quick updates and some of the things that are going on in Lansing right now, um, and then answer any questions that you may have or any concerns that you may have uh, to flag for me to work on. Um, so one of the biggest things going on right now, I currently, I serve on appropriations. I'm the minority vice chair for school aid. I also serve on the um, uh, environment, Great Lakes and energy budget and the licensing and regulatory affairs, insurance and financial and services budgets. Um, we are deep in the budgeting process right now. We passed out of the house last week, um, uh, uh, versions of the house versions of each budget, each departmental budget. Um, I personally voted no on each of those budgets um, because I think that all of them failed uh, to meet certain criteria, including making sure that those departments and those services were fully funded. There was a lot of money left on the table um, and they were ha not negotiated with the governor either. Uh, so that's part of the budget process. We, we voted on those last week. The Senate voted on their, their versions um, and now uh, that process will go into conference committee and there'll be negotiations between the House and the Senate and the governor's team. And hopefully we end up with a good end product. Um, I, one thing that I did wanna flag that was a particular concern of mine ser serving on the school aid budget was that 
um, inserted into um, the House budget, um, school aid budget, K-12 budget, was um, language um, that was uh, anti-trans against students, uh, trans students in Michigan, um, that would potentially jeopardize 100% of a school district's funding, state funding, if they did not um, ban uh, the way that was worded, uh, boys from playing in girls sports. And so that's potentially a, t a violation of Title IX, could jeopardize our federal funding, um, and obviously um, sends the wrong message to students, um, particularly some of our most vulnerable students. So I've introduced an amendment to remove that boilerplate language when we voted on it in our subcommittee, when we voted on it in the Committee of the Whole, and on the floor when we voted on it. Those amendments were all struck down, um, but I am confident that uh, it was not in the Senate version, um, and I know that it's not something the governor would ever support, so I'm confident that we'll be able to get, hopefully be able to get that language taken out of there in a, in a final version. Um, there was also is other issues with the school aid budget in terms of um, the House version, in terms of um, just providing adequate funding, increases in the foundation allowance. There was no increase proposed for at-risk funding, which we know that students who are at risk have a higher level of needs, and so, um, you know, from year to year, we increase that level, and so it was concerning that there was no increase proposed in this budget. There were some good elements of it. There was a very large increase uh, for special education reimbursement, which is very, very important, and we were happy to see that. So hopefully, in the final version, we'll have a better negotiated uh, budget. And um, I was also disappointed in, on uh, local government end that our um, uh, uh, budgets for um, uh, for government did not include an adequate uh, revenue share increase. Um, we were pushing for a 5% increase that did not appear in the House budget, but we will continue to push for that um, as it moves through the process. And again, that was an amendment that was that I offered um, in committee to raise that up to 5%, it failed, but we're gonna continue to fight for that as we go through the budgeting process. Um, another update I just wanted to give was uh, today I introduced a um, bill, a memorial highway resolution bill for officer Jessica Nagel um, Wilson, who was a um, officer in the city of Hazel Park who died in the line of duty near, nearly 20 years ago. She was only 26 years old, responding to a routine call um, and unfortunately was struck down. And um, uh, this, since we're nearing the 20th anniversary of her death, we, are, we introduced a resolution to um, designate I-75 between eight and 10 mile as the Jessica Nagel Wilson Memorial Highway. And her family was there. We actually testified on the bill today in committee. Her family was there um, via Zoom and Chief uh, Buchholz from Hazel Park was there via Zoom to testify. And uh, we're hoping that we can get that bill passed and out um, in time for that 20th anniversary. Um, other than that, um, we had we did have some, uh, there's a lot, there's obviously a lot of issues going on right now at the federal level, at the state level. Um, if anyone ever needs to get in touch with me, um, they can always email my office. It's Regina Weiss at house.mi.gov um, and be happy to respond to any issues or concerns that the community has. Um, but are there any questions or specific concerns that anyone on the commission has? Yeah. Will you uh, be our uh, representative in the uh, in the new boundary? Um, so in the new, obviously the new districts have changed pretty pretty drastically. So um, in the new configuration, I live in East Oak Park, um, which is in the new House District Six, uh, which also does include Huntington Woods. So I'm running for re-election in House District Six. Um, there are other, are other candidates also in that race. So. Um, but if I am reelected, then I would be still representing. And Huntington Woods is very fortunate in that Huntington Woods is the only community within the sixth district that's entirely within the sixth district and isn't split up between multiple house districts. So you'll have one state rep, one state senator, one, one uh, Congress, one representative in Congress. Okay, so is there a no other questions? Thank you so much for the update. Yes, thank you. <clears throat> okay, next uh, we have an opportunity for public participation. Um, for anyone who wants to comment on an item that's not on the agenda, please come forward. 
Oh, I'm sorry, we have the proclamations first. Two proclamations tonight. Um, the first one is a proclamation proclaiming May Asian Pacific American Heritage Month, whereas the month of May was chosen as Asian Pacific American Heritage Month to commemorate the immigration of the first Japanese citizen, Nakahama Manjaro, to the United States on May 7, 1843, but also the anniversary of May 10, 1869, completion of the first transcontinental railroad built with the backbreaking labor of nearly 20,000 Chinese immigrants. And whereas Oakland County's population is more than 8% Asian American and Pacific Islander, Michigan's population is more than 3% and Huntington Woods population is more than 2% AAPI. And these populations include Devote, devoted community members who serve as artists, business owners, educators, healthcare professionals, lawyers and judges, clergy members, first responders, and military personnel. And whereas while we celebrate the achievements and contributions of Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders that enrich our history, society, and culture, we must also acknowledge a darker aspect of the AAPI experience in America structural discrimination, negative racial stereotypes, prejudice, and injustice. Whereas Asian American Pacific Islanders have distinguished themselves as leading researchers in science, medicine, and technology, distinguished lawyers, judges, and government leaders in the arts, literature, and sports as war heroes who defended our country and healthcare heroes currently on the front lines of the pandemic. And whereas today, more than 20 million Asian American Pacific Islanders live in the United States and through their actions, make America, Michigan, Huntington Woods, a more vibrant, prosperous, and a better nation. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Robert Paul, Mayor of City of Huntington Woods, on behalf of the City of Huntington Woods City Commission, do her hereby proclaim May 2022 as Asian Pacific American Heritage Month in the city of Huntington Woods and encourage all Huntington Woods residents to learn more about Asian American and Pacific Islander heritage and work to combat racism and xenophobia as we celebrate this month, proclaimed on this 17th day, May 2022. And I have a second proclamation here. Um, and after the proclamation, I will uh, ask Nancy Nolan with Moms Demand Action to come up to the podium to, to make a few remarks as well. Declaring the first Friday in June to be National Gun Violence Awareness Day. This proclamation declares first Friday in June to be National Gun Violence Awareness Day in the city of Huntington Woods to honor and remember all victims and survivors of gun violence and to declare that we as a country must do more to reduce gun violence. Whereas every day more than 110 Americans are killed by gun violence alongside more than 200 who are shot and wounded. And on average, there are nearly 16,000 gun homicides every year. And whereas Americans are 26 times more likely to die by gun homicide than people in higher, in other high income countries. And whereas Michigan has 1,270 gun deaths every year with a rate of 12.7 deaths per 100,000 people. Michigan has the 29th highest rate of gun deaths in the US. And whereas gun homicides and assaults are concentrated in cities with more than half of them, all firearm related gun deaths in the nation occurring in 127 cities. And whereas cities across the nation, including Huntington Woods are working to end the senseless violence with evidence-based solutions and whereas protecting pr public safety in the communities they serve as mayor's highest responsibility, and whereas support for the Second Amendment rights of law-abiding citizens go, goes hand in hand with keeping guns away from people with dangerous histories, and whereas mayors and law enforcement officers know their communities best, are the most familiar with local criminal activity and how to address it and are best positioned to understand how to keep their citizens safe. And whereas gun violence prevention is more important than ever as the COVID pandemic continues to exacerbate gun violence after more than two years of increased gun sales, 
increased calls to suicide and domestic violence hotline and an increase in city gun violence. Whereas January 20, in January 2013, Hadia Pendleton was tragically shot and killed at age 15 and on June 3rd to recognize the 25th birthday of Hadia Pendleton, born June 2nd, 1997, people across the U.S. will recognize National Gun Violence Awareness Day and wear orange in tribute to Hadia Pendleton and other victims of gun violence and the loved ones of those victims. And whereas the idea was inspired by a group of Hadia's friends who asked their classmates to commemorate her life by wearing orange. They chose this color because hunters wear orange to announce themselves to other hunters when out in the woods. And orange is a color that symbolizes the value of life, of human life. And whereas anyone can join this campaign by pledging to wear orange on June 3rd and first Friday, the first Friday in June in 2022 to help raise awareness about gun violence. And whereas by wearing orange on June 3rd, 2022, Americans will raise awareness about gun violence and honor the lives of gun violence victims and survivors. And whereas we renew our commitment to reduce gun violence and pledge to do all we can to keep firearms out of the wrong hands and encourage responsible gun ownership to keep our children safe. Now, there it, therefore, be it resolved that the mayor, Paul of City of Huntington Woods, declares the first Friday in June, June 3rd, 2022, to be National Gun Violence Awareness Day. I encourage all citizens to support their local community's efforts to prevent the tragic effects of gun violence and to honor and value human lives. Thank you. Um, Nancy, would you like to come up and say a few words? Uh, yes, thank you for your time, everyone. And thank you, Heidi, for helping arrange this. Um, basically, you, you read most of the information that, uh, that we have here. Um, I, my name is Nancy Nolan. I'm a Huntington Woods resident uh, from 1998. And I'm also a Moms Demand Action uh, volunteer and this is a symbolic gesture but gestures of all types are important at this point um, the residents of Huntington Woods wish to enlist your aid in helping to stem the epidemic of gun violence in our country Specific, specifically I am requesting that the city of Huntington Woods issue the proclamation declaring that June 3rd 2022 be proclaimed as National Gun Violence Awareness Day and it's as as you uh, can see, it's also called Wear Orange Day. We're affiliated with the Wear Orange organization. Um, sadly, for every person killed, an average of two or more are wounded. Gun deaths take many forms, including suicides, cases of domestic violence, ex accidental shootings, and homicides. Gun violence is now the second leading cause of death for American children and teens. And unfortunately, in some groups, it is now number one. Um, so proclaiming, proclaiming uh, June 3rd, 2022 as Gun Violence Awareness Day, our city will join others across the nation um, in bringing attention to these tragedies. This is really the, the point of the, of the Wear Orange Day. Um, for more information, you may wish to research, research the story of Hydea Pendleton, a 15-year-old honor student who was shot and killed in Chicago um, about a week after her classmate performed at President Obama's second inauguration. Her friends decided that her death would not be in vain. And um, this was a movement that was started by her 15 and 16 year old friends. Um, and they chose a color as it was mentioned in the pro proclamation because it is bright and it's the color that hunters wear to say, don't shoot me. Um, this has grown into a national movement and um, it is now observed in communities across the country. And the things that we do for wear Orange Day, um, certainly wear shirts like this and uh, earrings and you know, make, it, make it a symbolic gesture to, um, to do things like uh, ch change light bulbs to orange and some cities light their, their bridges and things like that. So that is the main point. Um, thank you very much for your time and your, your um, help with this and we really appreciate it. And if there's any question about the organization, I have some information um, if someone would like to.
Thank you, Nancy. Maybe you could leave that with our city clerk. Absolutely. Okay, now we're going to public participation. Um, it's an opportunity for the public to comment on any item that is not on the agenda. So please come forward if you'd like to make some public comments. Thank you. As you know, two years ago, the commission passed a, <coughs> um, uh, approved a motion by Commissioner Olsman, seconded by Commissioner Elder, <coughs> to change the city of Huntington Woods standards and policies to allow elected officials to use city vehicles. Commissioner uh, Roselle was the only commissioner to vote against that motion. One would assume that the use of city vehicles must be limited to official city business, of course, but there is no language in the resolution speaking to that. Um, and one would <coughs> hope that um, in the interest of transparency and lest residents see this as self-dealing on the part of the commission, that the commission would provide annual reports of usage of city vehicles suggesting, for example, that you would simply indicate who, you, who used the vehicle, what the purpose was, where, the, where it went to, and what, what day. I think that would benefit the society. I think the residents would feel more comfortable with the transparency. And I look forward to hearing your response at some point. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Hi, I'm Deb Hemi from the library, and I wanted to just give you all an update. Just honestly, these are kind of random things, but a few things that are going on at the library. Um, I'm making a lot of uh, changes to the physical library, just moving things around, moving some things out, trying to have more front-facing books and things like that, um, trying to make it more welcoming and um, more comfortable for people who visit the library. In, in particular, I am uh, creating two group study rooms. We've had one, um, like a private or an individual study room where several individuals could be there and study alone. And instead, we've taken those carols out. We'll have a table and chairs and a whiteboard. And um, groups, like um, teenagers in particular, but any groups can use um, that room. And we'll also have one in the lower level. Um, the rooms are free. They are first come, first serve. You can't reserve them in advance and you will have the room for two hours and longer if no one else is waiting. If someone's waiting, then you'll have to give it up after two hours. So I'm hoping that will um, really accommodate, especially students studying for finals and things like that. Um, we, of course, have a summer reading program. Uh, this year, we have a free three-month trial of a subscription to something called Read Squared. Uh, that means that our entire program will be online. You will earn digital badges, it's for uh, all ages, zero to 100. Um, we also will have paper, if someone wants to use a paper uh, to track their, their record or if they don't want to register online, we can register for them. But it's a pretty cool program. You can get an app for your phone. It's really very easy. It makes it easy for us to keep track of prizes so people don't get more than one prize so any, or you know more than they're supposed to have. Um, so we're kind of looking forward to that. Um, our children's librarian, Calla Sundin, is going to be making um, presentations to, I believe, every um, class at Burton Elementary. Um, she is going over almost 10 days here and there, I mean, I mean several times a day, to present at their um, school library when they're at their library time. So um, we're hoping to get a lot of interest uh, and just to get her uh, more visible out into the community. Uh, on a technology note, um, we are in the process of getting new email addresses. Um, my, my email and many of my staff emails, staff members' emails go to people's spam folders and or we don't get emails back from people. So anyway, we are, we are moving to a new email platform and along with that, we are changing our domain name. Right now it is Huntington Woods Lib, L-I-B, like short for library, HuntingtonWoodsLib.org. It is going to become hwoodslib.org, and that was voted on by our library advisory board and by the staff. Um, we will keep the old domain for a year so people don't have to immediately change, but 
Um, it, it kind of started because I was filling out something and had to put in my email address, and I ran out of characters, <laughs> so I couldn't put in my email address. So this should um, help with that quite a bit. Um, we are also working on getting our public copier to be able to scan uh, to email or to USB because I believe that that is a basic service that libraries should should offer the public for free. So that hopefully will come up as well. Um, every library in Michigan had the opportunity to participate in what's called the MI83 ARPA grant. And TLN, which stands for the Library Network, that is the consortium that the Huntington Woods Library belongs to, um, received $121,000 to spend on digital content, on eBooks and audiobooks, and they have done that. So if you use um, digital books through the library, you'll see a lot more content there. Um, for us, personally, for Huntington Woods, we have five Chromebooks that I'm in the process of getting software, they need to be CIPA compliant for Child um, Internet Protection Act, and they need to be uh, able to be wiped clean after each, I mean, not like uh, data clean <laughs> after each use. Um, and we also have, a, we're going to be getting an outdoor, a large outdoor tent for um, programming and an, a microphone and a speaker. So anyway, we're really excited about um, the things that this grant uh, is bringing to us. The last thing um, is that the Woods Gallery uh, has sold four of the paintings from this current artist. The current artist is a Huntington Woods resident, uh, Marcy Bycat, and the library gets 30% commission on anything that is sold there. So it's good for us, it's good for a local artist, and um, we're really excited about it. I'm, I'm very excited about Joanne Callio, who is the new uh, Woods Gallery coordinator. She's doing just a fantastic job. So that's, thank you. Mayor Pro Tem Elder, I just want to make a comment if I can. Just want to say that uh, you must be doing a good job because I gauge the uh, success of the library on how frequently I hear from residents. And uh, hearing from residents generally is not a good thing when it comes to uh, the library. And things have been very quiet since you've started. So that must mean you're, all these programs you're implementing are uh, sitting well with uh, the residents. So appreciate the work you're doing. Or they're just giving you a honeymoon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, w I would hope that uh, we can publicize the electronic databases so even more people know about them. And the same thing with the passes. Um, I, th I think that's really unknown. Is there any chance that the front reading room might be returned to the public? Is this the, the glass enclosure? Yes, yes. Um, I'm gonna say no, <laughs> uh, because we have a reading room for adults and that is used as our children's story, uh, story time room. It's also used really heavily by, just during the, you know, when we're not having a story time by parents and children, in part, in large part, because it has a door and so if you have a crawling baby, you can close the door and the baby can't crawl out. So it's a pretty heavily used room. Is there um, a specific thing that you, a reason that you ask, like a specific thing that you wanted out of that room that could be met maybe in a different way? Well, when it was originally built and opened about 21 years ago, yeah. the whole idea with the Pawabic po uh, pottery fireplace and everything was to actually make it into a uh, quiet, comfortable, a reading room for adults, since a lot of the library was used for children. Yeah. Could I suggest that maybe we can move on to the next sure. item? And there's not any specifics. I think there's no, no, really I great just, suggestions yeah. here, but maybe we could follow up with you. Sure. Thank you so much. Okay, the next um, item on the agenda is a matter of receiving any public input on the proposed 20. 22-23 city budget in accordance with chapter nine, section eight of the city charter. Any comments? Do I need a vote on that? Uh, just when you open the public hearing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you just need to open and close we open the hearing. And announce the time and then we'll take comments and uh, Mr. Rowland has a presentation. Okay. okay. So open the public hearing at yep. what time? 759. Thank you. I didn't have a watch. Okay. <laughs> so you opened. You yep, did I opened the public hearing. Okay. 
If there are no comments, and I would defer to Mr. Rowland for his presentation. I'm going to do a brief, brief PowerPoint. So we went through the budget in detail at our study session about a month ago, so I'll just go over some very brief highlights of the budget, then I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, the budget includes the addition of one additional public safety officer and the conversion of the part-time communications consultant to full-time. And that's offset by the elimination of a full-time clerk at the rec center. Uh, two and a quarter percent wage increases across the board consistent with the union contracts and same levels of service across the board. Uh, taxable value of the city increased by 4.55%, but we're only allowed to capture the inflationary increase at 3.3%. So our total millage for the city is down slightly, is down 0.88% to 24.2 mills. On um, the major costs of the city, one of the um, major costs is MERS pension costs. So we have just over a million dollars in required contributions. We're going to continue to make additional contributions to get our funding percentage higher. We have $482,000 of additional contributions because as of 1231-2020, we're still only 64% funded. So we're looking to get that percentage up to 100 as soon as we can. The other major legacy cost is the retiree health care costs. We have $326,000 for pay-as-you-go to pay the insurance premium for current retirees. Then $421,000 we're setting aside to go towards our liability. So our liability is currently at $10 million, but you can see we've made a lot of progress here the last couple of years from 10% up to 21% funded. We still have a ways to go. In the water and sewer fund, we did the best we could to, to, to make the increase in the water and sewer rate as low as possible. We're increasing at 1.5% to 1345 per unit, uh, up from 1325 per unit last year. Um, we had in the packet you got from Great Lakes Water Authority, we had 4.1% increase in sewage costs. So we've done the best we can to eliminate as much of the cost as we can. Um, and then it also includes $125,000 for sewer and lead service line um, repairs. And the bond payment fee is staying flat at $1.92 per unit. Um, the major highlight of the budget is our capital projects. We have 6.2 million in construction projects this year, varying from sewer lining, sewer replacement, road replacement, and road mill and resurface. Then our capital expenditures, um, $828,000. And we have IT improvements, including servers and firewalls, uh, roof replacement at City Hall, copy machine replacements, demolition of the old dog pound building and replacing with the pole bar and carport. Burton track replacement, men's club field drainage improvements, um, security cameras at the rec center, and a replacement copy machine at the library. Public safety continuing with the body cam, taser, and scout car program. It's year two of the five-year program. A kitchen remodel at public safety building, and then turnout gear and bulletproof vests for the public safety officers. And the auto equipment fund, we're replacing one pickup truck and then buying out the, the lease on the admin public safety vehicle. And we're trying to uh, save money up because next year we're planning on the big replacement of the fire truck, which will be north of $500,000. So those are the major highlights. If you have any questions, I'm happy to go into more detail. Tim. Are there any public comments from the public? Do I need a motion? If there were none, then you would just close the public hearing. Okay. If there are none, then I will close the public hearing then. It's 804. 8.04 p.m. Then we move on to business item number one. Okay. Okay, so item number one is matter of adopting the city budget for the fiscal year commencing July 1, 2022 and ending on June 30th, 2023. Do I have a motion? 
I'll move that we adopt the General Appropriations Act of the City of Huntington Woods for the fiscal year July 1, 2022 through June 30th, 2023, and to make appropriations and provide for the disposition of all income received by the City of Huntington Woods. Second. Are there any public comments? Any questions or comments from the commission? All right, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. The next item is a matter of authorizing collection of the tax administration fee in accordance with PA 503 and 19 of 1983. Do I have a motion? So moved. Report. Any comments from the public? Chris, do you want to give a little background on this item? Uh, sure. This is uh, simply in accordance with state law. It allows the property taxes that are collected. Uh, we are we are the general tax collector. For all taxes levied in the city of Huntington Woods, we do distribute those to various uh, governmental agencies um, that are that are on the tax roll, including uh, Berkeley School District, uh, Oakland Intermediate Schools, uh, the zoo. Well, this authorizes the collection of those monies and the distribution of those per the rates that are established on the tax bill. Thank you. Any questions from the commission or comments? All right. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item number three, the matter of consideration to authorize the city treasurer to transfer the city's delinquent water bills for the following account sets in your package um, to the 2022 summer tax roll. Second. Any public comments? Question. Okay. Do we follow up uh, with people to see if poverty is an issue? Yeah, we sent letters to everybody on the list, and we're also going to have the rec center review the list to see if any senior citizens or anybody that sticks out to make sure we reach out to them. Thanks. Mayor Pro Tem, I was going to say either the font got smaller or the number of delinquent accounts is less than the prior year because it all fit on one page. So that was I think it's both. It was down a little bit of both. Four <laughs> okay. people. I think all it's four right. people less than last year and a little smaller font. Great. Thank you. <laughs> or my eyesight's improving. <laughs> okay. Um, if there are no other questions or comments from the commission, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, item number four. Um, it's a matter of consideration to approve and authorize the city to purchase a Michigan historical marker um, recognizing Rackham Golf Course. So moved. Second. Um, I do public comments yet? Yes, <laughs> any public comments? Um, a little background on this? Sure. Yeah. Uh, this, uh, thank you. The city uh, had applied and has been approved for a uh, state historical marker designation for Rackham Golf Course. Uh, it recognizes, I think, a couple of things. One, Rackham's position as one of the early premier, uh, this was a Donald Ross uh, design golf course. So it was one of the early premier uh, municipal golf courses in the United States, and importantly, was also one of the very first uh, integrated public golf courses uh, in the United States. A significant portion of the plaque is, mentions the efforts and recognizes uh, Elron Ben Davis, who was the first African American golf pro at a municipal golf course in the country, and uh, the history of this course's uh, welcome, welcomeness to all, including the legacy of, uh, of Joe Lewis and his tournaments that he would hold there uh, on a regular basis. So. I think it's a it's a nice uh, marker. If you've seen these around the states, I think you know about they're around the states. You know what they look like. They're rather, rather large. They're substantial. The cost is forty four hundred dollars. We have submitted for a grant uh, for a grant with the Michigan Realtors Association with the cooperation and efforts of Gail Linden in our community. So we have submitted to get reimbursed for this, and I hope we I, hopefully we will. Uh, there will be some cost into uh, the the uh, installation of this, but I think it's a, it's a proper recognition. Uh, for Rackleman and, and a good thing for the city, and I do recommend council commission's approval. Thank you. Madam, Madam Mayor, if I just may add to that, that uh, Rackham was uh, in the 40s uh, and 50s and 60s, as, as the city manager noted, was uh, 
one of the, uh, not just, it was a premier municipal golf course at that time in the United States, one of the, one of the premier courses, and it was also one of the courses that obviously was open to uh, use by you know, African Americans and uh, was very much the home for uh, Joe Lewis and many other individuals at that time who were not welcome at private clubs because of discriminatory bylaws and so forth. So um, given the city's uh, uh, interest in, in promoting diversity and inclusion, I think <coughs> that the plaque is an, is an appropriate uh, symbol uh, of that, and it's, it's something that every person who pulls up into the parking lot in Rack is going to see. So it is um, not, it, it is a historic marker, but it also reflects the city's goal of demonstrating uh, inclusion and diversity. So I, I'll support it. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Elder, I, I agree with my colleagues' comments. I will say it's a little disappointing that the city of Detroit is the entity that holds title to the property and actually operates the golf course, never stepped up and, and pursued this uh, themselves, but um, Huntington Woods is happy to step up and uh, move forward in, in uh, an area that uh, you know they failed to do so. So I uh, support spending the money, especially since a lot of it is coming from grant funds. Any other comments, questions? Yeah, I'd like to uh, thank uh, staff member uh, Hank Berry for spending the last 20 years uh, working on this project. Well, well noted. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, so, uh, all of those in favor? Aye. Aye. Oppo aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, item number five um, is a matter to approve and authorize the city manager to execute an agreement with Pyrotechnico Fireworks Inc. for a fireworks show on July 1st, 2022, um, and to submit the required license application to the Bureau of Fire Services. So moved. Second. Any public comments? Chris? Uh, thank you, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem Elder. Uh, upon, ar upon arriving here, Commission did uh, uh, direct me to see about re uh, returning fireworks to the city of Huntington Woods uh, once again for this July 4th. Uh, we were a little late in the game in the planning stage. We, we made, an awful, made a lot of efforts to a lot of vendors. Uh, we're fortunate we were able to come to an agreement with, with the firm we referenced, uh, Pyrotechnico. They have a local office out of Rockford on the, on the west side of the state, but do shows all across the Midwest. I'm very, uh, was very um, impressed with their capabilities. I think they will do a, a good show. Uh, we have uh, sit down with uh, representatives from Rackham to go over the kind of the logistics for that day. Uh, they take quite a while to set up, but they've got an area where they can set up and golf will continue to be played that day. And nobody ever hits outside of the fairway, so everybody will be, will be good there. Um, they do have, a, they've provided a map for us for the 600 foot barrier that they need uh, while they'll be shooting that night, so we've already worked with that with public safety who will, who will enforce that. Uh, they're looking at about a 22-minute uh, show. I have asked in, in uh, respect to the zoo that the loudest, of the, I, think, I think they refer to them as the titanium uh, blast, which are the ones that don't make a lot of visual effect but are very, very loud, the loud cannon booms that we refrain from those. So they are taking those out of the show and replacing them with other, uh, with other fireworks. So uh, this plans to start, oh, probably a date would be good. Uh, the evening of July 1st, we're going to do this on Friday evening. Uh, the 4th was not available, but I think with the way the calendar fell, this will be a nice kickoff to the long 4th of July holiday weekend. So we're going to do this on Friday night the 1st. I hope the residents uh, have a chance to enjoy this. We'll have the regular street closures, I believe. I'm still new to this, but I believe there's Ludlow, part of the service drive as well, to, to, to close the residents to be able to enjoy that. So we're working on a few other things for that evening, but I don't have those done yet. But we got the fireworks coming. So... What you have really in front of you, you have the contract, which you'll see, which I had to take the liberty because we had the money in the budget to go ahead and sign that to get the deposit to pay, to get them on the schedule. There is a license that uh, it's voluntary, but it's, I think it's a good idea to submit this to the State Bureau of Fire Services. So they submitted that to us. We'll get that signed and submitted to the Bureau. So they have that on record uh, for, for, their, for their records. Uh, otherwise, I think we're looking forward to a good show. Um, 
I've, uh, I put Ethan in charge of the weather for that night, so I think everything's gonna go well. And um, I, I'm excited for this for the community, so. I, I gotta That's say, Chris, thank you so much for jumping on this and being so new and taking charge of the situation. So save our 4th of July. Yeah. Madam Mayor, if I may yes. second that, what you just said, um, Chris has done a fabulous job in dealing with this. We're not the only city that's all of a sudden coming back to fireworks after COVID and getting everybody the way we quote unquote used to get them isn't as easy. Um, and um, I think also considering all the issues with regard to having employees and so forth, it's just tougher and tougher to do this. And Chris has been on this uh, early on in the, in the spring. And uh, I also, I know he's working on some other things with regard to food trucks and things like that, which we're trying to get for the for that event that night. But let's just say we'll start the 4th of July weekend off with a bang. Right? Oh. You, know, you like that, Mr. Oh. City Manager? Oh. Oh. A little poetry. Glad you got a good day job, Mr. Olsman. <laughs> keep, keep that one. <laughs> Are there any other questions or comments from the commission? Yeah, I'm just I'd glad like this puts do, the uh, issue to rest, oh. Madam Mayor. <laughs> the the, the uh, rumor about no fireworks has now been put to rest and that there will be fireworks uh, back this year. I'd like to uh, thank you on uh, the boomer issue so that at least we are recognizing the concerns of the uh, zoo. And also, hopefully, the zoo will keep the animals quiet so that the neighbors will not be upset as a response. All right. Did you get that, Ethan? Okay. <laughs> Let's put it to a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, the next item, number six. The matter of appointment of Chris Wilson as representative and Rocco Futura as alternate to the uh, Southeast Oakland County Resource Recovery Authority, SOCA. So moved. Move. Support. Don't think we need an explanation for that. No. Okay, any public comments? Any questions or comments from the commission? Yes. Uh, yes, the uh, chair of uh, Sac uh, SACRA is Mr. Wilson. Am I correct on that, sir? Uh, that is correct. I'm currently serving as the chair of the, the board. Mainly due to longevity, but okay. they've, they've kept me there. So, yes, I, I, am, I am the current uh, chair for that, for that board. Okay. So it's that's fine. That's yep. good. Yep. Okay, it's yeah. not a problem. We're all still okay. good. So you better appoint him another. <laughs> right. <person. laughs> that's what I mean. like, okay. Um, you don't want to embarrass the city. <laughs> okay. So all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item number seven. Matter of appointment of Rocco Futura as the representative and Chris Wilson as the alternate to SACRA for the fiscal year Jul beginning July 2026. So moved. Second. Any public comments? Comments or commission? Uh, comments or questions from the commission? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item number eight is the consideration to approve the city of Huntington Woods park usage rules and regulations. Madam uh, Mayor, you want me to indicated I intend to make a motion to table this for the meeting tonight because uh, there's, uh, uh, in my opinion, we're not, this isn't ready for um, discussion at this point. There's changes that need to be made and circulated and so forth. So I would move that we table this uh, to the June meeting, which I understand is June 7th, and I know there is an urgency about getting it done, but three weeks isn't going to make any difference. I'll second that. All right, so we um, now vote on it? Yes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item number nine is a matter of consideration to appoint Ethan Hahn as the interim treasurer for the city of Huntington Woods. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Um, maybe 
you some background? Sure. Uh, I think as council is now well aware, uh, finance director, treasurer, uh, Tim Rowland is going to be moving on to a, to a new uh, profession, new, well, not new profession, but new job in one of our eastern suburbs in, uh, in Wayne County. So um, upon his departure, we do need to have somebody officially appointed to the position of city treasurer. Um, I have done some consideration and I'm recommending that we appoint uh, current account specialist uh, Ethan Heim to that position. We're also going to work with um, uh, Plant Moran. Um, Ethan and Tim and I met with them last week. They will be bringing in a, um, some temporary help to help us get through the transition while we do begin the search for a new finance director, uh, which will probably take uh, a couple of months. But uh, with the departure of uh, with Mr. Rowland, there are some issues relative to the closing of the fiscal year, which we'll need some assistance with, and plan is going to assist us with that. Uh, I've been impressed with Ethan's uh, work ethic and skills and knowledge, and I'm confident he'll be able to step up and perform many of the duties, and with the help of, of Plant Moran, we'll get through uh, as best we can. Um, I know everybody will probably take some time tonight to say things about uh, Mr. Rowland and the, and the wonderful job he's done here. I only got the opportunity to work with him for a uh, for a few months, but I can tell you he's well known, well respected within the profession. It is a loss. Uh, I understand his decision uh, to move along, um, but the work he's done here will be um, will be long remembered. Uh, we always say within the profession, you know. Um, Watch bureaucrats, uh, fame is way too close to infamy, so you don't even really want to be famous when you leave. But um, you want to find that leave the job better than you found it, and leave your watermark behind. Leave something behind that people who know who know the business will know you were there and you did that. And Tim has definitely done that. Um, but enough about Tim. This is about Ethan, I guess, um, <laughs> and Ethan's appointment. So there will be some things that we do need to have uh, on occasionally signed. Uh, something needs to be signed on behalf of the city by the city treasurer, either from Equalization or the state of Michigan. Uh, so there will be those uh, those duties, but also just some of the day-to-day -day duties, and I'm confident uh, Ethan will be able to step up and, and, and do those well. So um, you have the resolution before you. That was my recommendation. I'd be happy to take any questions on that. Yes, sir. Does Ethan understand that if he signs something and that it's there's a mistake, that it's his liability and not the city's? Yes. <laughs> So it'll come out of his paycheck and not our budget. Oh, excuse me. It's <laughs> the people in MMR may, may disagree with you on that. On that uh, oh, oh, excuse but, me. But yes, we have had that discussion, yes. So before we go to commission comments, are there any questions or comments from the public? Um, Tim, before I hand it over to my colleagues, I just want to say thank you. You've been nothing but professional and given top-notch finance direction implementation for the city and put us in a really great financial position and definitely left us in a great spot um, to plan for, continue to plan for our future. Thank you for your public service. Um, very sad to lose you. You are a top-notch talent, but wish you the best, I think, um, on this next exciting chapter of your career. Thank you. Okay. Any questions or comments from my colleagues? I would second uh, uh, Mayor Pro Tem's, Tem's uh, comments and, and just say that uh, uh, exceptional would probably be the uh, word to describe uh, everything Tim has done in his tenure uh, as finance director. And every year when the uh, auditors come in, they gush all over how what a great job he's done and how much easier their job is as a result. And, the uh, accolades given to the city for its finance management and direction and so forth uh, are uh, si significantly uh, the result of Tim's uh, efforts. And uh, it is a very big loss uh, to our city, but good fortune uh, and good luck to Tim and uh, to the, his, new, uh, his new found home. And uh, we'll miss you, but we wish you the very best. And like I said, I would. I will describe this, his your tenure as exceptional. Thank you. Yes. Uh, thank you for beginning the second year budget. Uh, thank you for reaching out and getting funds beyond those that taxpayers have to pay for. Thank you for looking at our physical product and our 
uh, long-term needs as it relates to capital expenditure at a much finer detail. Uh, thank you for looking out for our future rather than just our present. Um, I know you'll do a great job where you go, and if you want to come back, I'm sure the door is open. Um, Madam Pro Tem, did we get a, a motion and a second on, on this? Um, I made the motion. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I think we're gonna. Jeff. No. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. After all that emotional comment, I kind of forgot what we did there. Okay. So um, let's put it to a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> Congratulations, Ethan. Okay. Big, sho big shoes. Uh, <laughs> huge. Yes. <laughs> it doesn't look like it, but they are. <laughs> okay. Item number 10, matter of setting a public hearing for the proposed adoption of the or of an ordinance to amend Chapter 40. This is the uh, Sustainable Design and Environmental Standards um, on Solar Structures and Easement to that ordinance. So um, do I have a motion? So moved. Second. And Chris, uh, would you. you like to give us some background? Sure, Madam Pro Tip, thank you. Um, this is a, a uh, ordinance dealing with uh, solar panels and their installation and use on, on structures within the city of Huntington Woods. This has been studied for, I think, quite some time by the Environmental Sustainability Committee with some input by the uh, Planning Commission. I know last year, prior to my arrival here, this did come back for a, a preliminary presentation from the City Commission. The City Commission heard it, uh, made some of their uh, responses to it. I was able to take that information and go back to the committee and come up with some modifications to what they had, had put in place, specifically dealing with um, concerns relative to the front yard uh, placement of these. So what they've been able to agree to is a, I think, streamlining of this ordinance that will allow uh, the location of many of these to be done by right on, 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 in, on homes uh, without some kind of a, a plan review, which will streamline the process. If they're in the side yard or the rear yard of the home, if they're in the front yard of the home, uh, applicants would need to go to the ZBA and make their case for why they needed to have that done in those cases would be decided on a case-by-case -case basis um, for, the, uh, uh, for, the, for the homeowner. So that's the ordinance that you have in, in front of you with those modifications that were made. This did not have a, plan, have a uh, public hearing at the Planning Commission, so what we were uh, proposing to do is just have this public hearing done at this point in front of the City Commission. So I'd ask you to set this public hearing for you. This, this particular... At draft as it's here today, not at the public hearing. That's correct. That's correct. This, this because you're the correct. planning commission, uh, when I, that occurred during my tenure as liaison, devoted substantial time and uh, public comment to the uh, solar ordinance, uh, solar panel ordinance. And it was not without uh, you know extensive discussion. So. Thank, thank you. You are you are correct. I probably yeah, state yeah, that yeah, proper, yeah. but well, I, yeah, you weren't here yet. But the, <laughs> And this version, I, I think there, I think with the revisions, there should be another public hearing. I'm asking this commission to do that. Uh, not trying to bypass the planning commission on this at all. It's just they've been through that process. So I think the revisions that were made were based upon comments from the commission. So I'd like for it to come back. You guys do the public hearing. Public hearing, um, June 7th, first reading, and then second reading adoptions uh, on, on August 16th. It seems to be a reasonable schedule to follow for this. So that's my recommendation. Um, so, so the motion is to set the public hearing. Just to set the public hearing, hearing, the public hearing for June schedule. 7th. Yes. yes, okay. Sorry if I went on too long. Oh, no, There'll probably be more comments, I'm sure, at the next meeting on this. That's good background. Do we have any uh, public comments on this issue? Okay. Commissioners? All right. Um, let's put it to a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And the last item is um, a appointments to boards and commission vacancies. So we have um, a senior advisory board. There are two applicants and um, one spot. Is that right? Yes. And an environmental sustainability committee. Uh, we have one opening. Correct. Do I have a motion? So move. Do you want the names that you need to pick? From? Oh, um, Okay, so the motion is to uh, 
Well, let me, Ms. Uh, Madam Mayor Pro Tem, I'll just chime in and I'll, I'll move that uh, we appoint Fun NG to Senior Advisory and Rachel Pollock to the Environmental Sustainability Committee. Thank you, Second. Commissioner Rizzo. Okay, um, let's vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion. Uh, opposed, I didn't hear any opposed. <laughs> so motion carries. All right, and I'm gonna go to city manager's report. Thank you, thank you, Madam Pro Tem. Um, as I just referenced earlier, uh, with, with the departure of uh, Mr. Rowland, we have begun the process for a new finance director, a treasurer search. Uh, opening ads for that went out um, uh, this week on it's been posted on the Michigan Municipal League. Uh, I was able to pull resources from some of the same sites that the commission used for posting of the um, city manager's uh, ads uh, uh, a few months ago, so we were able to hit some of those same sites as well. Also sites for um, uh, professional sites for African-American CPAs, Hispanic, and I believe there's a, a Filipino CPA group as well. So we made, uh, we made all those outreaches and, and we'll be taking applications through in the first week in June uh, and do a first review then and, and hopefully begin the, the process of um, uh, re trying to replace uh, Mr. Rowan. I know I spoke well of him earlier and I'll, he looked a little uncomfortable so I won't, I won't, I won't labor on, but uh, other than to say uh, uh, thanks. Uh, I still owe him a, a lunch at the Beef Carver, which those that know me is one of the highest honor you can probably receive. It's um, besides showing the frugality of our city. <laughs> it's worth every dollar. Worth every All dollar. Right. We'll be we'll be um, we'll be the youngest two there, I think. <laughs> yeah. So you and only two sitting at the same table. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, thanks, Tim. Um, uh, I, I think the city well recognizes what he's what he's done and what he what he has brought to the table here. And, um, I look forward to uh, hearing how things are going. Uh, so please, please stay in touch, and I, and I know he will. Uh, a couple other matters very quickly. Um, we we're still working on the Juneteenth celebration that is going to be scheduled for Saturday, uh, June the 17th from 2 to 5. It's going to be in the Recreation Center Library parking lot. Eight. The 18th. The 18th from 2 to 5. Thank you. I, I'm sorry. Um, Saturday, that's Saturday from 2 to 5. Uh, we work. We are going to have some um, a variety of foods on on site from various uh, uh, restaurants. Uh, some of it's going to be uh, catered. It'll be available for for, uh, for for purchase that day. Uh, we are going to have books. A selection of books available for kids. So there will be giveaways for children. Uh, there are going to be arts and crafts there that day. We are getting some um, people to come in. We're going to have a speech on the importance of June Juneteenth. What the day symbolizes. We'll also have some. Um, I believe we have somebody come in and lead us in the singing of. Uh, lift every voice and, and sing. So it's going to be a good afternoon. The DJ is coming in to play uh, music in the later part of the day. So uh, it'll be good for, for kids, uh, children, families of all ages. There's going to be food, so I'll probably be there the whole time too. Uh, so we look forward to having everybody there. Looking forward to a good turnout. Um, it's the first time we've done this, so um, we're, we're kind of excited about it and uh, looking forward to a, to a good time that day. Um, we did receive this week a copy of our 10-year franchise agreement from Comcast. It's every bit as exciting reading as it sounds. Uh, I've given that to, to Ms. Rosati and her staff. They've been in the process of going over that. Um, it's not a tremendous deal, but but it is important. Uh, that is how they operate their franchise here locally under under Comcast. So and it only comes up every 10 years. So they're reviewing the language for that. There is a time limit on that. Given the earliness of our next meeting, we still do that. But I would look for that to be on the June 7th um, agenda, and that is where we do receive franchise fees and our uh, public education and government fees, PEG fees that we get for funding some of our programs. So that was last done here in 2012. Uh, so it's not something that comes in very often. So and I thank her and her staff for her work on that. Uh, lastly, and I think I forwarded along to some of you a few weeks ago, I was sad to hear of the passing of Dennis Dubay. I don't know how many of you knew Dennis or worked with him. He was a literal giant in the field of uh, municipal labor law in the state of Michigan. and. Uh, I have felt privileged to have worked with Dennis for many years, learned a lot uh, from him, and was sad to hear of his passing. I did reach out on behalf of the city to uh, Keller Toma, uh, to Gory Sassetal, who currently works for us, and all their staff, and pass along our condolences. So uh, thanks to Dennis, and my condolences to uh, the Dubay family. Thank you. Any questions? Before you adjourn, I just want to make one quick uh, statement, announcement, whatever. 
Uh, we just, the, our, my colleagues uh, and myself want to uh, congratulate um, our, our former city manager, Amy Sullivan, on the marriage of her daughter this uh, Friday night to uh, her daughter, Lainey Sullivan, to Michael Rutar, uh, her fiance and husband to be. And uh, this has been a very difficult year for uh, Amy uh, and her family as a result of her illness that led to her retirement. So we're all very glad she has the opportunity to celebrate this momentous event with, uh, with her family. We wish uh, them all the best. And on behalf of uh, the City Commission, we send our congrat hearty congratulations. Thank you, Commissioner Olsman. Well said. Okay, with that, I'd like a motion for adjournment. So moved. moved. Thank you. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you. Great job. Well done.